no difference at all. No, it's it's, <laughs> I mean, no, it's, it's funny because in Israel, we, we, be, we became bigger and bigger. Uh, and the ironic thing is that in Israel, we're still our own label. In Europe, we now sign with, with, with a major label, but it's funny because our touring life kind of started without them and it's now kind of continuing with their help, but the album was not out kind of like in time because we, we started touring before the album, you know, just the day the album was out. So it doesn't have any effect, you know, the songs are not being aired on the radio and the album didn't sell so much that it's bringing people to our shows. The, the people that come to our shows are still people who, you know, kind of heard about it from the last people who were, we maybe were in, in their city and they brought their friends. And it's growing very organically and, and you know, slowly, but it's, it's, it's amazing. You know, we, it's, it's much, it's even much more, um, uh, it's beautiful to see because you know that it's not somebody sitting in an office made it happen. It's your music last time we came and we played in front of 50 people. And this time it's almost, you know, it's packed with 300 people and, and it's, you, you know, you, you feel you've earned it. And, and it's amazing. It wasn't hard for us to, to establish a band. Our different, band, different roads. Yeah, we, we mainstream success was never a part of our agenda. Um, we wanted to make our music. It doesn't really matter who would, you know, what media reaction would be to it, you know. Of course, we love it because at the end of the day, it gives us the, the, the financial uh, state that we can continue making music without, you know, having to keep our day jobs. But it wasn't an aim. Um, so it wasn't hard for us. You know, it was something that we knew we wanted to do. And these were the songs and this is the music that we love. Uh, again, the, the, another beautiful thing that happened is that from being very much a taboo to sing in English and, and, and being an Israeli artist, and having stations which only would put Hebrew music and not Israeli music, it kind of, it's, it's changing and, and it's nice to, to know that we had some part in it, you know, and uh, it's nice. It, it is changing. They're like Today's artists would have a much easier time singing in English. And even now, maybe it is a bit trendy even in Israel. So. We don't work in the radio. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, most most radio stations just have like a playlist, and then you know the rest is whatever that that these want to play. But I don't think there's like you have to play. I, there are certain like uh, radio stations that will only play that are owned by the yeah. government yeah. or something like that. And that then they have to play certain things, but. I believe in that. I don't believe in that. Of course, of course, an Israeli station should give air air time to, to Israeli bands, but I think if if they're good enough, they, they can compete with with international bands. And that's that's the, the the judgment that you should put upon music. Not, you know, it's 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 shit because at the end of the day, what it's doing is putting boundaries on music as well, which is supposed to be something. We finally have something that is not confined by by borders of states and stuff like that, and. So I'd rather be judged that, you know, we don't consider, consider ourselves an Israeli band. We're a rock and roll band that comes from Israel. Um, but it's just, you know, our nationality. It has nothing to do with our music. And I don't, I don't mind neither in Israel or in Germany or in the States to be judged just by my music. You know, I, we, we believe in it enough. We had tryouts like uh, uh, like um, American Idol. I was sitting, <laughs> <laughs> and Rand would come and he would sing Amazing Grace. Amazing. Amazing. No, no um, it just it was Rand's fault actually. <laughs> it, it's Rand's fault that we have a band. Um, I just started off playing acoustic guitar about four years ago. I wrote these songs, felt that I needed to to you know portray these feelings that I had. Started playing. My older brother, which is now our manager, but back then he was just my older brother who, you know, he, he looked after me and, and, you know, 
I was playing in front of five people and he said, okay, maybe I can bring some more people with my friends. And, you know, he would drag friends to come and see yeah, me. He would call me. <laughs> and then he knew, he knew his band and he would say, listen, my, my, my kid brother has, has a gig. You should come see him. You know, I thought you were like 13 because he said, my little brother is playing. I'm, I'm, I can be your dad. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> and I was there and I was, that's your little brother? Um, How old are you? <laughs> <laughs> and then at the end of the concert, which was very... Um, It was amazing because I knew his band and I really liked them. They were like this kind of kick-ass rock. And, and, and then he said, um, your music is special, Sam. Your music is really special. No, said, I said that I was really overwhelmed. You know, the first reaction you see when you hear and you see this guy. So. And uh, he said he knew, he knew my band, like you said. And, and then we just started looking for <laughs> musicians to play because the people in my band didn't want to play. <laughs> so it was, it was just me. Uh, and, it was uh, it was kind of pussy music to them yeah because they were like this hard uh, kind of rock thing yeah uh which is funny because at the end we became more and more powerful anyway <laughs> the thing is that it, that it kind of grew organically he knew the drummer i knew another and we tried a lot of different things and it didn't work and i get i i get so so frustrated from it um I would just disappear and, and, and Rand just pushed and pushed and he would keep on calling and said, listen, I'm not giving up. We're doing this. It, it's, it's too good to let go. And, and, you know, I owe the world owes uh, the, the, this music just uh, to, to Rand's persistence. Uh, thank you, thank Rand. You. You're special. No, thank you. <laughs> it's, it's weird because having your older brother on tour with you and it's it's a stupid decision to make <laughs> um but but it's good because i know how to fight with him you know i know how to argue with him i, I i've done it you know 29 years and counting and um so it, it's good in the sense that you know we we can work out we can resolve our there's always going to be arguments and there's always going to be because somebody who manages your your career literally manages your personal life as well because everything has, has a reaction to it and it's weird because i i you know you as as i grew as a musician and everybody it happened to all of us it's kind of like everything it's like you know those horse race horses that you don't you know they put yeah. the, our world became narrow narrower and narrower in the sense of uh, you know our our social lives you know we are our family the, these people that's on the road on the road with you are your family and your your friends and your closest you know you pass everything with them so you know ran and, and johnny and pellet and, and das and the technical crew even are, are just as much you know my family as, as roy my brother now and i see them more than i see my girlfriend and it's it's sad really <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh. No, the only the only people who have any reaction to it is the media. Yeah, it comes the from media the media feeds and it's, exactly. It's kind of like fashion shows. It's fashion for fashion designers. I don't designers remember us and, saying to anybody, yeah, we were nominated to. Uh, we didn't we even we didn't even we really did, send yeah. a lot of you know usually bands when they're nominated they send shitloads of email and and promotion to, to to get people voting for them. It didn't you know if people like the music they would vote for it. If if they don't we don't deserve it anyway. So. These titles are just, it's nice to have trophies, but it's, um, you know, it's, we, we, the biggest cliche of, of, you know, of artists is, you know, we're just in it for the music. We really are. Mainstream success and the media and, and, and these trophies are just tools for us to keep on doing whatever it is that we want to do, which is continue making our art and, and, and living this life and continuing doing it. So it doesn't really affect us. Just like bad reports don't you know we don't and good reports and you know comparisons to this and this and this magazine said that it's nice and we appreciate it because it opens up to, to different crowds that maybe didn't know you um but it doesn't really affect us and you know, personally or artistically at all you try to keep your legs on the ground No, we can. We we we've Finally. been fortunate enough to to uh, almost a long time ago uh, quit our jobs and we're we're making music full time. 
and it's it's demanding enough you know there's so many different aspects it's when we have time we want to record or probably you know rehearse and then there's touring which takes up most of the time because we became an international band and there's so many places you know <clears throat> and everybody thinks you're not getting enough because okay this is our first time in Austria but we have to do Switzerland and, and Germany and then France and Portugal and US and now we got an offer for China and it's like um, so it's it's amazing because you know you get to, to see all these places but it, it's hard work and we don't have time for anything else even if we wanted to work in different things we just don't have time for it anymore uh, we barely have time to make music <laughs> okay well thank you thank you good companions <laughs> you coming to the show tonight yeah good cool.